Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. And welcome to again to Stories with Reginald. Reginald. <laughs> hey, it's really good to see you all. And, and Pastor Andy? Yes, sir. Uh, we had some good questions for people last week. We did, and we got another um, question. We actually got a thank you note. Oh, nice. And a question. Okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you, want to tell jokes first? You have a joke? I have a joke. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a, a guy, and he has a pet centipede. A pet centipede. Pet centipede. And um, he tells his pet centipede, hey, go out to the, to the mailbox and get me my newspaper. Okay. And then about an hour later, no newspaper. So he goes out and he finds his centipede. He says, hey, because an hour ago I asked you to get my newspaper. Well, why didn't he go? He, the centipede said, I've been putting my shoes on ever since. Oh. Yeah. The centipedes have lots of legs. Right, 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 right. Hey, did you did you hear about the guy who had a fly in his soup? No. What did he, he say? He, he said to the waiter, hey, waiter, there's a fly in my soup. And what's he doing there? Hmm. And you know what the waiter said? Um, I don't know. I think he's doing the backstroke. <laughs> Guys, so what do you call a fly with no wings? A fly with no wings. A fly with no wings. I don't know. You call it a walk. Oh. So let me read you my card. Okay. It says, Dear Reginald and Pastor Andy, thank you for always making me laugh and teaching me so many cool things about Jesus. But I have a question for you. Uh oh. A question? Question. Why did God create mosquitoes and no seams? All they do is bite. I got no clue on this one. Why did God make mosquitoes and no seams? Yeah, don't, they, they hurt, especially at this time of year, the no seams, they just bite you all the Right, time. because you don't, you don't see them. That's right. Well, if you think about it, God has a purpose for everything, even mosquitoes and no seams. A purpose to bite us? Right. No, 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 no. So, do you ever, in the summer, do you see bats flying around? In oh, the yeah, evening? at nighttime. At nighttime. I, I can see them flying. They, they zip this way and zip that way. It's really kind of cool to watch. Exactly. Do you know what they're zipping around doing? I don't know. They're zipping around eating mosquitoes. Really? So mosquitoes are food for bats. Well, I knew I liked bats, but now I like them even more. Right. <laughs> so they do have a purpose, even though they bite us too. Huh. Well, Pastor Andy, well, that's a good question, but there's a purpose for everything. I still haven't figured out my purpose yet. Well, we're going to keep working on it. So if you remember last week, we started reading a story, remember? I do. It's called The Little House. Uh-huh. And it's by Virginia Lee Burton. Remember what was happening in the uh, story? Yeah, there was a little house, and it was in the countryside, and the seasons changed. But then people started building things like roads, and then more houses came, and they started building up around the house. Right. The, the, the little country house was surrounded by things. So we're going to finish our story about The Little House. I love it. All okay. Right. And I'm going to go back just a few pages from where we finished uh, last time. Okay. So this is, um, one day the little house was surprised to see a horseless carriage coming down the road. Remember, that's cars. Pretty soon there were more than of them on the road and fewer carriages pulled by horses. Pretty soon along came the surveyors and surveyed the line in front of the little house. Pretty soon along came a steam shovel and dug a road through the hill covered with daisies. Then some trucks came and dumped big stones on the road and some trucks with little stones and some trucks with tar and sand. And finally the steamroller came and smoothed it all out and the road was done. Wow. Now the little house watched the trucks and the automobiles go back and forth to the city. Gasoline stations, roadside stands, small houses followed the new road. Everyone and everything moved much faster than before. Glad they're zipping around. Yep. More roads were made, and the countryside was divided into lots. More houses, bigger houses, apartment houses, tenement houses, schools, stores, garages spread over the land. The crowd around the little house, no one wanted to live in her and take care of her anymore. She couldn't be sold for gold or silver, so she just stayed there and watched. Really, she kind of looks small in that picture. Yeah, she does. 
Now, it was not so quiet and peaceful at night. Now, the lights of the city were bright and very close, and the street lights shone all night. This must be living in the city, thought the little house. And I didn't know whether she liked it or not. She missed the fields of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. Apple trees dancing? Do your apple trees dance? Yep, they sure do, especially in the wind. Hmm. Pretty soon there were trolley cars going back and forth in front of the little house. They went um, all day and part of the night. Everyone seemed to be very busy. Everyone seemed to be in such a hurry. Really? You could see them running past. Pretty soon there was an elevated train going back and forth above the little house. The air was filled with dust and smoke. And the noise was so loud that it shook the little house. Now she couldn't tell when spring came or summer or fall or winter. It all seemed the same. Pretty soon there was a subway going back and forth underneath the little house. She What's couldn't a subway? It's a, it's a train underground. Wow, we don't have those here in Bloomington Normal. No, we don't, but they have them in Chicago. I thought it was a sandwich shop. That, she couldn't see, but she could feel or she could feel and hear it. People were moving faster and faster. No one noticed the little house anymore. They hurried without a glance. Oh, really? They just passed her up? Yeah, she looked sad, too. Pretty soon they tore down the apartment houses and tenement houses and the little houses and started digging big cellars. And one on each side, the steam shovel dug down three stories on one side, four stories on the other. Pretty soon they started building up. They built up 25 stories on one side and 35 stories on the other. 25 stories? They're big skyscrapers. Now the little house only saw the sun at noon and didn't see the moon or stars at night at all because the lights of the city were too bright. She didn't like living in the city at night. She used to dream on the country in the fields of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. There there's apple trees dancing again. Yep, the little house was very sad and lonely. Her paint was cracked and dirty. Her windows were broken and her shutters hung crookedly. She looked shabby, though she was just as good a house as she ever was underneath. Oh, that's kind of sad. But she, she was still a good house. Right. Then one fine morning in spring, along came a great-great-granddaughter of the man who built the little house so well. She saw the shabby little house, but she didn't hurry by it. There was something about the little house that made her stop and look again. She said to her husband, that little house looks just like the little house my grandmother lived in when she was a little girl. Only that little house was way out in the country on the hills covered with daisies and apple trees growing all around. They found it was the very same house. So they went to the movers to see if the little house could be moved. The movers looked at the little green house all over and said, sure, this house is good as ever. She's built so well she could be moved anywhere. So they jacked up the little house, put wheels on her. Traffic was held up for hours as they moved her out of the city. They, see they moved a house? Moved a house out of the city on wheels. Wow, I've never seen that happen before. At first, the little house was frightened. But after she got used to it, she rather liked it. They rolled along the big roads. They rolled along the little roads until they were way out in the country. When the little house saw the green grass and heard the birds singing, she didn't feel sad anymore. They went along, al they went along and along but they couldn't seem to find just the right place. They tried a little house here. They tried a little house there. Finally, they saw a little hill in the middle of a field and apple trees growing around. There, said the great-great-granddaughter. That's just the place. Yes, it is, said the little house to herself. A cellar was dug on top of a hill, and slowly they moved the house from the road to the hill. Wow. The windows and shutters were fixed. And once again, they painted her a lovely shade of pink. As the little house settled down on her new foundation, she smiled happily. Once again, she could watch the sun and the moon and the stars. Once again, she could watch spring and summer and fall and winter come and go. Once again, she was lived in and taken care of. Oh, wow, that's a great story. Hold on, it's one more page. Never again will she be curious about the city. Never again will she want to live there. The stars twinkled above her. The new moon was coming up. It was spring. And all was quiet 
and peaceful in the country. Oh, that's a nice story, Pastor Andy. It sure is. A little house, uh, well, wanted to see the city, got to see the city, and then got to move out of the city. It was very nice. Well, it was still a good house. It sure was a good house. And it just needed to have a new purpose. Yep, it sure needed to have another purpose. That's kind of like us, Pastor Mandy. We have a new purpose? Well, sometimes we do something or we learn something, like how to tie my shoes. But once I learn how to tie it, there's so many other things that I could learn. And if I only learned how to tie my shoes, then, you know, then there has to be a bigger purpose for me. Right, just like mosquitoes, just even though we don't like them. And no see -ums. And no see -ums. They have a purpose. They feed they bats. They feed bats. So, I, boy, I hope I can figure out what my purpose is going to be when I grow up. Yeah, we'll keep working on it, okay? Okay. All right, we should pray. Yeah, let's pray. Our song? Yeah, let's, let's sing our song. All right, here we go. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Now remember, be a what? Be a blessing. Be a blessing this week. Yep, see ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.